and they are very easy to monitor. So that we are going to follow again with some examples. So one of the examples I discussed last class, so I'm not going to go into the details of it. So I'm just giving you the examples. It is iron in an octahedral geometry with six water molecules. So what is going to happen over there? So first it is octahedral geometry. So the first thing you are going to do is to draw the octahedral geometry electronic distribution. So it is iron plus two to start with. So 60 electrons. And it is going to be a high spin system because H2 is a sigma donor, pi donor ligand. So six electrons are going to contribute. One, two, three, the fourth and fifth electron goes over there, high spin system. Sixth electron comes over here. So now over here, you can see, just looking into that, first thing we are probably going to say, there will be no lattice contribution. And there will be valence contribution. Right, because the valence cell is inhomogeneously filled up. However, this kind of electronic configuration also triggers the Jan Taylor distortion. So Jan Taylor distortion will be there. And what will happen? These orbitals will split up. Similarly, these orbitals will split up. And you are going to have this contribution. And once you have Jan Taylor distortion, this is going to be stabilized, this particular configuration. And what will happen? These two axial ligands generally have been going to have different bond lengths compared to this square planar geometry. So there will be six water molecules bind to the iron, but two of them, the axial ones, are different compared to the equatorial ones. So that means previously what we say is the lattice contribution is not present. That is wrong because due to this Jan Taylor distortion, now it is going to be present. So it will having both valence contribution, both lattice contribution. And at the end, what we are going to have is a very strongly splitted line. So generally, once the result is shown, it is given both the values, the delta value, the isomer shift, say it is given 1.2 millimeter per second. I'm giving you the data from the original literature. And the splitting, the quadrupolar splitting, it is written as delta EQ, and isomer shift is written as delta. This is the quadrupolar splitting and this is the isomer shift the so quadrupolar splitting is 3.4 millimeter per second now if i ask you to draw the mosbus spectroscopy how it is going to look like so what you already know is that in reality i am going to see two splitted lines like this right Now the question is, what is the position of these lines on the x scale of uh, velocity millimeter per second? And this is the partial of transmitters. And over here, what we are going to find out, so let's say this is x, this is y, and we want to find x and y. So this is already given over there. What is x minus y, the difference between them? That is delta eq value. Right. This is given over there, 3.4 millimeter per second. And what is the average of X and Y? That means what will be the peak before it's splitted? That is going to be the value of the original isomer shift. So X plus Y divided by 2, that will be 1.2 millimeter per second. That will be the original delta value which is 1.2 millimeter per second and delta EQ is 3.4 millimeter per second. So now if you solve this equation, you can find X and Y. So I'm not doing the full mass. X is minus 0.5 millimeter per second. Y is 2.9 millimeter per second. So you can say this is minus 0.5. This is 2.9. So these are the values are getting and that is how you actually find out where the lines would be. Okay. And uh, before going further down, the question is why the quadrupolar splitting happens. This is because basically 
when you look into the excited state of i equal to 3 by 2 and the ground state of i equal to half, we generally talk about this is the only signal I'm going to see. So we show a line like this. But in reality, what happens due to this quadrupolar splitting, due to this quadrupolar moment, it is going to affect only the non-spherical one. That means I equal to greater than half states. So over there, ground state is I equal to half, so it is going to remain the same, I equal to half. But this state is going to split up. It is going to split up in plus minus half and I equal to plus minus three half. So there are total four states possible in between three half. Plus three by two, plus half, minus half, minus three by two. And among them, what happens because of this quadrupolar moment, this system can differentiate between plus minus half and plus minus three half. So plus three half and minus three half come together over here and plus half and minus half come together over here, which are all generating from I equal to three half. So over here, now you can have two interactions. Okay, so instead of one line, you are going to see two lines. And what is this difference? This difference is the delta EQ, which is shown over here. And what would happen if the splitting is not there? This will be exactly in the middle. So that is why their average value, what is actually supposed to be the isomership value. Okay. Isomer shift is before you consider the quadrupolar splitting, where the line should be cutting the y-axis. And quadrupolar splitting is after you consider the quadrupolar effect and how where the lines are. Okay. That is how the signals can be distributed. Any questions or query up to this point? Please go ahead. Okay. If not, We'll go ahead and over here we are going to talk about some of the other examples and over there we will discuss the answers of the quiz three. So now exam take the example of the iron system. Bound with six ions. And this is an iron plus two state. So as we know, cyanide carbon is actually from group 14. So it is going to be a pi acceptor sigma donor system. So it is going to be a strong pill ligand. So low spin complex. So what will be the splitting? It is going to be T2G and EG. So now if you consider it is a iron two system, what is going to happen? We are going to see all the six electrons is going to be present in the T2G level, right? So in this particular condition, do you expect any gentler distortion? The answer is no, no gentler distortion because this configuration, if you if you do the splitting, you are not going to gain any energy. So no gentler distortion. So all the six ligands around this system going to be as same as it is there. So there will be no lattice contribution because all the bonds will be exactly same bond length. What about valence contribution? Second, so valence contribution is also going to be zero because it is a very symmetric T2G6 EZ0 system. So over there, T2G is already well fulfilled. No asymmetry, EG is no electrons there. So also totally symmetric. So altogether, T2G6, EG0 is totally symmetric system. So there will be also no balance contribution. So what will be the EFG electric field gradient? It's going to be zero. So that means you don't expect any quadrupolar splitting over here because your electric field around the metal ion is not creating any asymmetry. And that is what actually we observed when we measured the system, the delta value, the isomer shift for this iron system is actually 
minus 0.13 millimeter per second with delta EQ value zero. That means no quadrupolar splitting and you actually see a single band like this for the Fe CN6 system with iron at plus two oxygen state. So you are taking this Fe CN6 four minus system. So what the charge is four minus to show that there is the plus two charge of the iron in the middle. And over there where it is actually cutting, it is cutting at minus 0.13 millimeter per second. Compare this system with respect to the iron with four water molecules, six water molecules earlier. The delta value was 1.2. And with cyanides, it's moved to minus 1.3. So which side it is moving from water to cyanide? It is moving towards the negative side, 1.22 to minus 0.13. Why it is moving to negative side? Oxidation state remaining same. Only change is the spin state, high spin to low spin. Low spin means it is moving some electron density out of it, and that means it is actually creating more chance of the S electron density, especially the 3S electron density, to interact with the nuclei because of less shielding effect, and that is increasing the high zero square value, and it is multiplied with the delta R by R, which is a negative term, and that is why I am going to a more negative side. So this is exactly the argument we have given over there. So consider that ligand of the pi acceptor is cyanide, pi donor is water, keeping iron plus two cell. So cyanide should be in the negative side, water should be in the positive side, and exactly that is what we observe. Water with 1.2, cyanide to minus 1.3. Okay, so that is what we are gaining there. Now say, instead of same system, but I have a three minus change altogether. Why? Right? Because now the iron is in iron plus three state. Iron plus three state. So over there, now if I draw it, the electronic distribution. So it is a D5 system. It is still a low spin system because all cyanides are around here. One, two, three, four, five. So that is how the electronic distribution is there. T2G5 EG0. Now you can have a Jan Teller distortion. The EG orbital, there is no point of drawing the Jantler distortion because there is no electrons altogether. So that is how it's going to look like, and you are going to see some Jantler distortion. So what is going to happen? Two axial things are going to move out. So you are going to see some lattice contribution. All the ligand metal bonding is not going to be same. So lattice contribution will be non-zero or you're going to see lattice contribution. What about balance contribution? Now it is actually a T2G5 system. It is a T2G5 EG0 system. T2G5 means all the T2G orbitals are not symmetrically filled up. So there is asymmetry present. So balance contribution will be there. So what do you expect over here? You are expecting a quadrupolar splitting. And in reality, what we see, it has a delta value of minus 0 0.03 millimeter per second and delta EQ value close to 0.5 millimeter per second. So you can draw this thing. So this is going to be a very closely line, two lines. And that is what is going to show it over there. So now the first question is, where is the delta value? So what are you going to do? Take the average of these two lines and draw in the middle. And this is the value of the delta value, minus 
0.03 millimeter per second. Look into the value, compare that with the previous one, iron 2. It was minus 0.13. So iron 3, iron, sorry, iron, <coughs> did I call it correctly? Yeah, iron 2 is there. Iron 3 is in minus 0 0.03. So over here, it is actually moved towards a little bit on the positive side compared to the iron 2 over here, which is on the negative side. So what is the expected thing? If you have a low oxygen state, that should be lie on the positive side. And iron 3, which is a higher oxidation state, it should lie on the more negative side, but it is showing the opposite trend. Why it is so? That is because the measurement also depends on the temperature. So sometimes the temperature also has a huge role to play. And over here, the temperature where the iron 3 is measured, it's not at the same temperature as the iron 2. So that is why it is showing the data in the more positive side. But if you can able to measure that at the similar temperature, then the value starts shifting. And at the low temperature, it starts shifting close to 0.5 millimeter per second. And then it shows that it is actually going to be a little bit on the further negative side, which is expected for higher oxidation state. So it is going to move to minus 0.5 millimeter per second. So that is why you have to be very careful when you are discussing and comparing different oxidation state of a similar system like iron. You have to ensure all the other experimental conditions remaining as same as possible. Otherwise, you cannot compare them directly. And over here, what do you expect with respect to the splitting of the line? The splitting of the line will be more sharper at lower oxidation state compared to the uh, sorry, lower uh, temperature compared to the higher temperature. Okay, why it is so? It is again very similar to what do you expect at lower temperature. The electric peak gradient will be much sharper because the asymmetry will be holding it up. And at higher temperature, because the electron has more space to move and you are giving some thermal energy to move the electron. So whatever the asymmetry you are creating around the nucleus, they can get destroyed. And that is why you are going to see some broad peaks at higher temperature. So as you are going to lower temperature, you are going to see sharper peaks. So that what do you expect for iron plus two to iron plus three system in the cyanide? You are expected to see the shift of the delta value, keeping all the other experimental values same. And the secondly is the splitting. In iron two, you are not expecting any splitting. In iron three, you expect the splitting to be there because both lattice and balance contribution will be there. One more thing you are probably going to see over here in iron cyanide 3 plus system versus iron 2 H2O whole 6 system. Here the splitting is way too large compared to the splitting in the iron 3. Why? That is because if the splitting is happening with the asymmetry, the asymmetry of the electrons generating from the EG level is actually affects more because the EG level shows the shifts in the dx square minus and dz square orbital, which actually creates more asymmetry along with the movement of this axial limit. Whereas a change in the T2g level, dxy, dyz, dzx, they create some asymmetry, but it is not as strong as it is happening in the EG level. And that is also shown in the MOSBA spectroscopy with respect to the quadrupolar splitting. Quadrupolar splitting is going to be much higher when the gentler distortion is happening through the EG level also. If the EG level is not happening, it is only happening to the T2G level, your quadrupolar splitting is going to be smaller. Okay, next example. Now say I am taking an iron complex 
octahedral geometry. Over here, five of them are cyanide. This is actually a nitrosyl group. Iron oxidation state is two. So what is going to happen? So again, we are going to look into that. We are going to find this is the T2G, this is the EG. There is a nitrosyl group is actually replaced a cyanide group. Now cyanide and nitrosyl both are pi accepting ligand. So it is going to be staying a low spin complex. So it is actually iron 2 D6 low spin complex. So it is going to be like this. Now over here, do you expect any gentler distortion? Answer is no. It is a totally T2G6 EG0 system. So do you expect any balance contribution? The answer is no, because it is all very symmetrically distributed, T2G6 EG2, EG0. What about lattice contribution? Now over here, a lattice contribution will be present because all the equatorial bonds are same, but one bond in the axial is cyanide, one bond in axial is nitrosyl group. So they are different. And that difference will be shown up in the system. And over here, what we are going to see is the following. The delta value is going to be minus 0 0.27 millimeter per second. And delta EQ value is going to be 1.85 millimeter per second, which shows this delta EQ value, what you are seeing, is coming from lattice contribution. There is no valence contribution, but lattice contribution is there. And look into this value, 1.85, compared to that water molecule bound system when both lattice and valence contribution was there, it is 3.4. Now, one of them is cutting off. The valence contribution is going out in the case of this complex, and that is why the delta EQ value is going down. So you can see it is kind of additive. More contribution you are getting from both lattice, both valence, and it is going to be contributing over there. Okay. <clears throat> now, this value of delta equal to minus 0.27, it is measured at the same condition where iron CN6 4 minus is measured at delta equal to minus 0.13 millimeter per second. So iron with all cyanides is minus 0.13. Iron with five cyanides and one nitrosyl, it is minus 0.27. So what you can comment on the pi acceptance property, a pi acceptor property, comparison between nitrosyl and cyanide if we consider these delta values. So you can see the delta value over here is more negative of the nitrosyl group containing system. So that means why it is more negative? Go back to your logic. That means it is going to have higher value of AC electron density in the nucleus. The chi zero square value is higher. That means it has more AC electron interacting with the nucleus. That means it has less shielding effect. That means it has less D electron. So how it can happen? It can happen if nitrosyl is pulling out more AC D electron compared to cyanide. So over there, by comparing that, keeping all the other systems same, pi donor property wise, nitrosyl is actually a little bit better than cyanide in this particular scenario. And that is why the delta value is moving towards the more negative side. Now, if you put in another particular group over here, X, where you are actually trying to look into how the pi acceptor property is compared to cyanides, and you just have to follow that isomer shift value. If it is going to more positive side, that means the pi acceptance property is poor. If it is moving more negative side, that means pi acceptor property is better. So that is how Mossberg spectroscopy can give you such nice information about the molecular property, what is happening at the molecular level of the molecule, where the pi acceptance property, even with one particular ligand, can be 
distinguished. Okay. Any questions up to this point? 